Words About Books is a poorly spoken podcast. Once a month, we get together as a book club and we read and discuss a single book. And this uh, this month, the month of love, we have decided to read Twilight Midnight Sun. I am your host as always, the Greek god shampoo commercial hair having motherfucker Nate and a really okay, hairy if, guy Ben. If one of us has <laughs> Shampoo commercial hair. It's me. Not not with that bun. Not with that bun. It's not always in a bun. Sometimes it's flowing. But yes, we're talking... And I have to say, we're talking about Midnight Sun, a book in the Twilight Saga. Saga. That's what it's called. It is the Twilight Saga, book five. Book five. Or really, book one... Part B. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's it's the B side of book one. If you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard of Twilight, we'll do our, our due diligence here. Yeah, what is Twilight? Well, first, I'd like to discuss the author, because we always do it about the author. And this book is very much... <laughs> you will not be having any death of the author conversations, because... The main criticism slash observation slash fact is that Twilight is based on um, a dream Stephanie Meyer had in which she was romanced by a vampire who struggled with his desires to also kill her. Hot, as we all do. Hey, uh, it appeals to quite a few people. So Stephanie is Bella. I, I don't know to the extent where their personalities differ but this story definitely started with stephanie meyer in the lead role and she kind of wrote out from there she is obviously most famous for the twilight series and the twilight series is almost single-handedly responsible for the sign in barnes and noble that says why a paranormal romance as a <laughs> genre uh, she definitely tapped into a market there <laughs> And if you don't like her books, if nothing else, uh, she she found an audience, an, an underserved audience. She has her bachelor's in English from Brigham Young University, which she completed in 1997. She met her husband while she was in college. They were married in 1994 and had their first child in 1997. Stephanie Meyer was a stay-at-home mom until the... Twilight dream the came curse to her. Came? Oh, <laughs> and she then started working on Twilight. Uh, actually, I have a very specific date for that. She had the dream on <laughs> June second, two thousand three. A specific date for that because she Why must have recorded. Why does she it. have a specific <laughs> date for that? I don't know. <laughs> That's the date she had the dream. That's what that's where Twilight truly begins. So she started writing, she she prepared a novel and uh she managed to sell it. She I think she I forget how many agents she sent letters to, but I think she sent like 15 letters out or something. She got like 10 rejections, four no uh no callbacks and one acceptance. Hey. 20 no's and a yes is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in publishing, that's how you got to do it. So Yeah, and in Twilight. She, she um, got her agent. She They auctioned off the rights to the books. They were bought by Little Brown Books, I think is the imprint or publisher. I forget which. Um, and that is who publishes all the Twilight novels. The publisher... Spoke with Meyer, and they decided that the books would be a trilogy, later uh, a quadrilogy, I guess, if that's what you call a, a four-part series. Yep, and now it's a quin quintilogy. Qui oh, we're going to get to that. <laughs> Twilight, is a, Twilight is now an empire. Oh, God. So uh, Meyer, Meyer's main influences are Jane Austen. Shakespeare, you know, the, the romance specialists. 
and Orson Scott Card. Oh, oh dear. For oh dear, only one reason I can think of. Meyer Sites music. <laughs> okay, all right, we're <laughs> just, moving on. <laughs> okay, does anybody not know <laughs> what the, what the reason is? Do I have to say it? <laughs> uh, okay, Stephanie Meyer is Mormon. What? Um, when did this happen? <laughs> she was Mormon the whole time. <laughs> I know. Twist of the century. Um, I, I will say she gets... Uh, part of the reason I was kind of reluctant to bring that up is because I think she gets a lot of judgment for that when I don't know that it really is earned. I don't think Twilight is Mormon propaganda. I don't think she attempted to put overtly Mormon messages in the book. I think it just, you know, she's Christian. She wrote, she wrote from a <laughs> position of what do I know? Okay. I'm going to go from there. She has opinions about, uh, like, I think she obviously prefers uh, no sex before marriage. Uh, right. Things like that. Um, so unless that, that... of course you, you, you marry for a weekend, you have a bunch of sex and then you divorce. That's okay. I don't think she'd be super okay with that either. I don't think that's fair. I, I know. Uh, Orson <laughs> Scott Card, though, uh, I didn't realize he was Mormon until I started How? reading this. All I knew is he hated gay people, man. A lot of people can Why do did you that. think the main characters in Ender's Game were Mormon? Were they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, dear. I need to go read that again. Oh, Jeez. dear. Yeah, that's why they... <laughs> Really had so many fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he he specifically mentions that that um, his I don't know if it was like his mother or both of them like used to subscribe to a Mormon or an ancient religion. Like he he makes it as like they're it's kind of like a played out thing that doesn't exist anymore, but they still clung to their Mormon heritage or something. But no, yeah, Orson Scott Card is super Mormon and um, also the fucking worst but this is a this is a discussion for another time yeah well versus <laughs> scott card is a different different beast yes um, i i think he gets uh rightly deserved shit he does yes i stephanie meyer has as far as i can tell she doesn't have a twitter and god bless her that's the easiest way to stay out of trouble oh yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure Stephanie Meyer has fairly religious opinions, but again, her opinions are kind of common to all Christianity. I don't really know why she gets so much crap for being a Mormon specifically, because really the only Mormon value she brings into Twilight is, I guess two, is like family, like very, really close-knit family and really close-knit family. <laughs> So she also cites music as a prominent influence in her writing. And this I didn't know prior to researching this. She posts her playlists on her websites of the songs that specifically inspired her books. These bands include Muse, which you may remember if you watched the Twilight movie. Uh, the, <laughs> the famous baseball scene. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, everyone look that up on YouTube after this. She also enjoys Blue October, perhaps unsurprisingly, My Chemical Romance. I wonder if she enjoys their song, Vampires Will Never Kill You or Hurt You. I forget what it's called. <laughs> um, she likes Coldplay. Uh, Perfect. Most, he he most named his baby do. after a fruit. Well, better than Chris Martin Jr., I suppose. Uh <laughs> And, of course, the band, every edgelordy teen, including myself, loves Linkin Park. Linkin Park actually gets a shout-out in this novel, which I kind of loved. It was totally out of place, <laughs> and it made me laugh, but I really enjoyed it. You didn't like classical music and also Linkin Park? Every bit of music mentioned in this is like classical music except <laughs> hybrid theory by lincoln park is in bella's cd player obviously because she was a teen she was a teen girl in 2005 oh boy are we going to 
We're going to get into that. But yeah, I guess before I go much further, I should confess, I don't think I have ever seen a Twilight movie in its entirety. And um, why would you? <laughs> Even Robert Pattinson hated them. Well, uh, they, they are borderline unwatchable. Before I get into this, I'm going to say I like Twilight. I've read all the Twilight books, uh, except the novella, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner. I have not read that one. What the fuck? It's it's a whole thing. Brie Tanner is one of the newborn vampires in book three. It's... Oh, does does this one also fall in love with uh, another boy? Oh, no, I think and... she gets ripped apart by wolves and or vampires. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, but yeah, I've read all the books. I... This is, I think, the first time I'm admitting publicly to this. I like them. Oh, my God. I also have a story I'm obligated, blackmailed, really, to tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom and my sister both listened to the show, and they told me if I did not tell this story Uh-oh. that they, they would personally find a way to tell it. Uh-oh. <laughs> all right. Let's hear it. I read all of the Twilight books in 2010, and I can't remember if I got, like, the first one online or something, but I needed the next one. I think it was Eclipse, and I was in a bookstore with my mom and my sister. I think I was was home from college or something, and I offered my sister $5 in addition to the price of the book to purchase this book for me. (laughs) <laughs> as my sister is of the right or was at the time of the right age to and, be interested in Twilight. target demographic yes and I offered her five dollars not an older the... hairy man correct um, <laughs> so I bribed her and she went up to the counter with the book and I, I was smart you know I didn't give her the money up front I, I gave her the price of the book and it's like five dollars upon your successful return crafty And I don't know if it was her or my mom, but at some point in the purchasing conversation, they turned and pointed at me (laughs) and all shared a laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. And so the the moral of that story is uh, my sister cannot be trusted. The moral is after you told her to pack up her shit because she's going to a new family, she decided to get even many years <laughs> later. I was going to say that. That was, a good, that was a good 10 years later. She was plotting that whole time. Now, Nate, so I'm coming from a position of somebody who's read the entire series, and I my my views are complicated. They're probably going to come out in the podcast. I have a I have a soft spot in my heart for this book, and in general. It's a, it's a serious medical issue. It, it is, yeah twilight fever yeah you it's terminal if we don't treat it <laughs> you this is your first twilight book Th- yeah this was my first twilight and i i can tell you also my last unless you make me read more for this podcast she has announced that she's got at least two more stories in mind god i hope one of them is from uh james the tracker's perspective and one of them is from her dad's perspective we we get we get those books Good news for you, Nate. She has promised never to write one of these from another perspective books again. Oh, thank God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of this book, I, I went in with some assumptions, right? And just based on, like, cultural osmosis. And then, like, he'll start reading people's minds, and I go, what the fuck? Did he always have this ability? He and always did. Be like, that oh, was yeah, in all the stuff. Jasper, uh, he comes from a war-torn time. I'm like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? So, <laughs> I am coming well, you... at this from not knowing much of anything, and I guess I, I should admit I didn't hate this. I didn't like it. Like, let's get that <laughs> straight. I didn't like it. I maybe liked two chapters. Uh, I was getting into it. Like, wow, when did this become good? And then it. Then it stopped being good, and it went back to being terrible. But, yeah, I have. I, I don't know if we're still doing the thing where you have to defend it, but... We'll um, get there. But I'll say, I didn't hate it, but I will be prosecuting it to the fullest extent of my abilities. <laughs> First 
I want to begin, now that we've discussed our personal histories with Twilight, I just want to give you a quick timeline of the Twilight Empire. In 2005, the Twilight novel debuts. The world forever changed. 2006. Some might, some might argue not for the better. New moon drops. And we get the intense love triangle between werewolves and vampire. Team Charlie. And I don't know if like I don't know if Twilight started this. When did werewolves and vampires become like natural opposites? Was that Twilight or was it like did Anne Rice do that or like For some reason a... I thought you said Anne Rand. Uh I I don't know. Yeah, did I Rand write a good <laughs> like werewolf romance? A very <laughs> Oh, God, a very fiscally responsible werewolf. (laughs) I don't know. But so 2006, new moon, werewolves, Jacob takes his shirt off. 2007, we get Eclipse. Uh, I forget what happens in Eclipse. I think, uh, oh, um, Victoria comes back with an army, and that's a whole big thing. And then uh, 2008, we get Breaking Dawn, and that is the... Epic finale to Twilight. Not going to talk about Breaking Dawn. The host. <laughs> You're not going to talk about Breaking Dawn. <laughs> Breaking Dawn. <laughs> a lot of good so, reasons for that. Some things happen. Jacob should probably put that shirt back on. Uh, <laughs> Jacob just, should probably uh, check put into that shirt some back sort of on, center. Turn around and walk away and just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if anyone... If anyone came on to my child right after being born, I think uh, I think maybe I wouldn't be okay with that. I wouldn't be, like, encouraging that. Edward and Bella. I'm not defending this part. That was fucking infuriating. <laughs> I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> also, so- I'm, I'm reading that maybe Underworld was when werewolves and vampires started hating each other. I don't know. That that's, that's could be. The best, that's the best you're going to get. That could be. Okay. No, so she also publishes The Host. The fuck so is Stephanie The Host? My- that is Stephanie Meyer's attempt at adult fiction. Oh, no. The Host Oh, no. Isn't- yeah. Oh, so I want no. You to- I want to point out to you. Oh, no. <laughs> Nate, I don't know if we've, if you've been paying attention, but she had a book come out 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2008 again. Yeah, she's got us beat, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the host, I've never read it. I There is a movie. Oh, my God. Is it is it, is it it adult in the way that Sarah Fine no, was adult? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's adult in that that was its target demographic, as opposed to young adult, which is what she had been previously writing. So it, the host is about, like... Uh, alien viruses that body snatch you or something. I, I don't know anything about it. I don't really care. Uh, then also that year, the first twilight film comes out and we are introduced to the legendary on screen pairing of <laughs> our Bella and Edward for all time, <laughs> Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson. Uh, but Robert Pattinson, yeah. Ro- that guy, he's Batman. Good Robert Pattinson is Batman. And I I heard this. I'm stealing this from a YouTube channel, but I loved this joke, and I knew I had to mention it on this podcast. There's a YouTube channel called Cinema Therapy. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's it's a, a licensed therapist and a filmmaker sit down and watch movies and talk about all the psychological problems the characters have. Oh, no. <laughs> And the oh, therapist, no. the therapist points out that the main problem with Edward and Twilight is that he courts Bella the way Batman interrogates criminals. There's there's a hey, scene in the perfect. movie that's perfect. There's a scene in the movie where I don't I don't think these exact words are in the book, but in the movie it goes, "I've killed people, Bella." That's so dreamy. I've I've thought about killing you. I'm I'm sorry I made you think about killing me. I I know that that was wrong of me to do. 
<laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it plays out in the movie. There's, there's like, he just goes through this like series of like, I'm not good for you, Bella. She's like, I don't care. I kill people, Bella. I don't care. I thought about killing you, Bella. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Here's my sketchbook of me dismembering you. <laughs> yeah, I have a detailed plan to murder you and your whole family. <laughs> And I don't know how much longer I can hold off. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Then in 2009, New Moon comes out. <laughs> then in 2010, uh, Eclipse comes out. And the graphic novel, Volume 1. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Yes, Twilight the Graphic Novel, Volume oh 1. There are two. It won Best Manga of the what? Year. What? It is, I don't know why. It's it's illustrated by uh, Young Kim, so I guess that makes it Manghua. I, I don't know what the Korean version is, but yes, it, it was an anime style kind of thing. Wow. So, uh <laughs> There is a Why? there is a Twilight manga out there. <laughs> and this is also when the short second life of Brie Tanner novella is released. This is also the year I read the entire series in the span of a month. <laughs> and they all laughed at you. <laughs> <laughs> then 2011. Uh, just keep in mind, these are like one year after another. 2011, Breaking Dawn Part 1 comes out. Twilight, the graphic novel, Volume 2 comes out. And very important for our episode today, 12 chapters of the Midnight Sun rough draft are leaked onto the internet. And the world would be a better place if she would have just stuck to 12 chapters. It would have been a much (laughs) better book. Stephanie Meyer, uh, this this is actually a move I really respect from Stephanie Meyer. Fans were pirating these chapters. She initially asked fans not to read them. She said it wasn't ready yet. It was a rough draft she had sent out to test readers. One of the test readers, I don't know if it was an accident or what, but it got leaked. She kind of knew who did it because they each had a different version of the, of the <laughs> manuscript. And she said, you know what? People are going to seek this out. I don't want you downloading it illegally. And she just put it on her website. She's like, I really, I don't want you to read this, but if you're going to read it, you can read it here. And I thought that was actually cool as hell. Then in 2012, Breaking Dawn Part 2 comes out. And I I attempted to watch that movie because I wanted to see certain scenes from it. And no, it's unwatchable. It's, it's, <laughs> there's, they're there's so one bad. Good part. In the Breaking Dawn Part 2. It's oh, like, the dream? It's, it's the dream, or the vision. That's, the vision that doesn't actually happen. That's not in the book. Yeah. Why do you think it's so <laughs> great? <laughs> I, I wanted to see Bella turn into a vampire. Um, And, oh God, that that's a whole other issue. Did you ever see the scene where Bella turns into a vampire? No, but I know that it... it is around the time he performs a C-section with his teeth for some reason. Let me tell you, uh, as a fan of horror, (laughs) Stephanie Meyer, I have a story about this, I guess. Um, So she wrote this scene where Bella is pregnant with a half-human, half-vampire fetus that is developing at an accelerated rate. And so she's she's going through like all three trimesters of pregnancy in the span of like a couple weeks. And I think that's what my wife would prefer at this point. <laughs> well, she's, hold ready, on. she's ready to get this kid out. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so once the baby grows enough to start moving around and stuff, uh, it kicks like a baby does. And it breaks her fucking ribs. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like... Bella is getting like just totally taken out from the inside and they, uh, she can't eat like, like she keeps eating food, I guess, but she's not gaining weight and she's like very skeletal. And eventually they, they realize that she's pregnant with a vampire. So they have to give her blood. So apparently they give her a sippy straw. Yeah. They put the blood. 
put a, they, it's like a, um, a Capri Sun. They just take a blood pouch and they pop one of their straws in it. <laughs> and um, she, she, as a human, starts drinking human blood to satiate the monster growing inside her. And the whole time, Edward is trying to talk her into aborting this fetus. <laughs> And she she won't. Um, and I, I guess this is something Stephanie Meyer felt strongly about, like, because she's had children. So she had the talk where if it comes to me or the baby, she would prefer they save the baby. And so that is also Bella's choice. And so okay. Bella Bella's plan is she will carry this baby to term, which will kill her. But right before she dies... Edward will turn her into a vampire. Why can't they turn her into a vampire now? That would kill the baby. Why? Because the baby's still half human. And so Bella, like, I think Stephanie has described, I call her Stephanie like I know her. I, I think Steph, call her Steph. <laughs> I think Stephanie Meyer. I think it's because I've always said Stephanie Meyer. I never say just like Meyer. I don't know. But. So Stephanie Meyer has um, this rule that female vampires are infertile because their bodies can't change enough to make babies. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's bullshit magic. Yeah. Poorly explained bullshit magic. Yeah. But yet also somehow overly explained. It's not vague yeah. enough, but it's also too detailed. Yeah, so anyway. Or uh, not detailed enough. Yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> the scene comes where it's time to it's time to pop this kid out, right? And they're like Carlisle is away for some reason. He's the only doctor in the family, but for some reason <laughs> he had to leave. That makes sense. Know. I guess he had so an emergency at the Yeah, I guess he had an emergency at the hospital or something. So Rosalie tries to uh do the C section. Yeah, I, I guess they don't care too much about doing it right because they're just gonna <laughs> turn her into a vampire. So <laughs> We'll just cut wherever. We'll we'll eventually we'll find that child. We'll get it out of there and then we'll turn her into a vampire. It'll be fine. Yeah, It'll you don't fine. need those organs when you're a vampire anyway, so Stephanie Meyer's pro life message is just not coming through. <laughs> Like, if I were a woman, this would horrify me more than anything. So she um, she tries to put a scalpel in, and, the, like, the scalpel breaks or something because the fetus is all, uh, or the not the fetus, the, the uterus is all, like, rock hard because it's, like, vampire uterus now. What? And shut up. And huh? <laughs> How is the uterus? The uterus is not the babies. You realize that, right? I, 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 I know that. Yes. <laughs> Tell me like I don't know anatomy. I know this is weird. So so then um, Rosalie gets the bloodlust like you do. And Jacob has to tackle her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so Jacob tackles Rosalie. And Bella, meanwhile, is just being Pummeled to death from within <laughs> by this child. And so Edward, he's like, well, there's only one thing that can cut a vampire, and that's my teeth. <laughs> and, so he... <laughs> and so he... he that's why he does it with That's why teeth. he does it. So he he just takes a... He bites the uterus, he bites the uterus, I guess, and just rips it open. And then this horrific alien <laughs> monster pops out. And then they got to like, Hoop, toss that aside. <laughs> and, Get that out of there. <laughs> yeah. And they take a syringe full of Edward's vampire venom, which he has on standby because they knew they were going to have to do this. And he pulp fiction injects it directly into her heart. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish you could see the motion. Like I'm doing the whole motion as I talk. So he just he just slams that needle into her heart and like plunges the venom into her heart, her still beating heart, and then he just starts biting her, just biting her everywhere <laughs> to to get as much venom as possible. 
It wasn't the... enough that he already stabbed her in the heart with Venom. No, well, they didn't know because she's like so close to death. So they need the change to happen as quick as possible. And so he just he just starts biting her and injecting venom into her. And that's how she turns into a vampire. Wow. Apparently, though, <laughs> that scene, as I just described, is the toned down version. Because apparently whatever she gave to her publisher, the publisher sent back and said, too much. <laughs> you, you know that your audience is uh, young girls right how they got a pg-13 rating <laughs> on this movie i will have i will never know <laughs> but yeah that is the most horrific birth scene in cinematic history just uh i guess i should put spo- <laughs> this is the fifth book in the series if you don't know how bella becomes a vampire you're gonna have a huge problem figuring out this book so okay um, and i did <laughs> so that was 2012 <laughs> we're still doing this <laughs> we're still doing this there's just two more points i gotta get through then in 2015 uh which is now the 10 year anniversary of twilight we get a new twilight novel from the perspective of oh no it's not, i'm sorry we get a new gender twilight gender bender gender bent twilight this is life and death an alternate universe Twilight where all the genders are bent except for Charlie and Renee because she didn't think it was believable that uh, if Renee were a man, she would have gotten custody because she didn't have a job and she moves all over the place and she's an idiot. Fucking sucks. Yeah. And then... I hate her mom. This the, Okay, so real quick, just two points about life and death. Uh, Bella becomes Beaufort and <laughs> uh, Edward becomes Edith. Oh, and Jasper becomes Jessamine. And it ends with just the one book. Yes. At the end of Life and Death, Beaufort uh, gets Beaufort. bit by... <laughs> I, mean, I don't fucking name him, man. But Bo gets bit. Beaufort sounds like a really bad cat's name, but go on. By... Uh, it's not James... I, I no, I don't think. I, maybe it was Jesse. Maybe she just went there. Maybe maybe she just team rocketed this. <laughs> but <laughs> she he gets bit by the the female tracker and uh, just turns into a vampire. Uh, they don't they don't do the venom sucking in this. And then that brings us. Well, to, yeah, you can't pull out if you're the if you're the lady. That brings us to <laughs> <laughs> why we're here today. Out of nowhere. In 2020, Stephanie Meyer <laughs> announced she was publishing Midnight Sun Perfect. after after refusing to publish it after the initial leak. Actually, she was going to try to publish it for the 10-year anniversary, but right before she did, the Fifty Shades of Grey lady published Grey from Christian's perspective. Ugh. And that just put her off because if you didn't know, Fifty Shades of Grey was originally Twilight fan fiction, but... Kind of not like Fifty Shades of Grey was barely Twilight fan fiction. I think she was just trying to like get into the fan fiction community because it had an audience. Yeah, I heard she sucks, so you can cut that. She's if you not, want. yeah. <laughs> no, E.L. James, I'm not gonna no, E.L. James is awful. So okay. That's um that's how we got here. Yep. That's that's <laughs> how we got here. Well, see you next week, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what it, I think we we described what Midnight Sun is. This is this is the first Twilight book, the original one from two thousand five, that has been retold as Life and Death. That is now being retold from Edward's perspective. This is now the third time Stephanie Meyer has written Twilight, and uh, it's interesting. I I don't think it stands on its own. Uh, I was talking to Nate about this a little bit before, and I think he has some thoughts on this. This book was mostly supposed to be a treat for fans of the original Twilight who wondered what was going on in the mysterious Edward Cullen's mind. Turns out not a lot. <laughs> I don't not know. a he very some... interesting guy. Uh, he's an interesting guy. I disagree with that. <laughs> uh, he used to be interesting a long time ago. He was like fighting crime. 
And then, <laughs> then he's like, I'm going to go to high school for like a hundred years or whatever. But I'm going to complain about it a lot. I'm going to complain about humans and how much humans suck. But I really want to be a human at the same time. Yeah, no, this is so difficult to understand if you haven't read the other books. At first, I mean, I figured so you... it out. Uh, you can see my notes <laughs> where, I'm like, where a new revelation happens. I go, what the fuck? When was this a rule? You had no idea the vampires had, like, superpowers? I think I, I forgot that Alice could see the future, but I... That was the only one I knew about. I didn't know Edward could read minds or that Bella's mind was so special and awesome he couldn't read her mind. Okay, that's like the whole plot of Twilight. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you, because we've got so many issues with this book and we spent so much time getting to this point. I just want well, to Well, it's a brief... two-parter, so I mean, we've got... It... <laughs> I just want to briefly give you the uh, the summary of every Twilight book. This will cover all three versions of this story. Okay? I'm going to generalize the shit out of it. Okay. The object of monstrous affection enters into the monster's territory. The monster is immediately struck with contradictory impulses to both kill and unconditionally love the main character. For some reason, the object of affection also feels intense attraction to the monster because there's bad boy eyes the monster thinks that this is a bad idea and tries to resist their urges the object of affection can't get over how hot the monster is the monster saves the object of affection's life the monster thinks this is a bad idea and tries to resist their urges <laughs> The object of affection can't get over how hot the monster is. <laughs> the monster saves the object of affection. Oh my life. god. Are you on repeat? Do I need to go over there and reboot you? The monster thinks this oh is a bad god. idea and tries to resist, but this time he's waffling a little. Or she, as the gender bending may occur. Or the gay <laughs> version that I'm working on. <laughs> Oh, God, if Bella got with Alice, that would make me so happy. Oh, I was um, saying Edward and Beaufort. They're getting together. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so cringe. So, uh, okay. So, uh, he, the monster doesn't want to resist anymore. And, and now, the monster and the object of affection hold hands. But the monster thinks that. this is a bad idea and tries to resist. <laughs> and the object of affection can't get over how hot the monster is. <laughs> The monster and the object of affection kiss. <gasps> I remember that. The monster thinks this is a bad <laughs> idea and tries to resist. Oh but the object God. of affection can't get over how hot the monster is. <laughs> the monster and the object of affection start hanging out with still more monsters. Uh, it turns out this time it was a bad idea. And some of the bad monsters decide to kill the object of affection. The object of affection still can't get over how hot the monster is. <laughs> Like a shampoo commercial, despite being in the rain. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Bad monster nearly kills the object of affection, who is saved at the very last possible second by the good monster. But if you're in the gender bent universe, then scratch that, you die and come back <laughs> as a monster. Oops. Uh, point 15. <laughs> Oh, the good monster stops the object of affection from turning into a monster herself, but we all know that's probably going to happen later, uh, but the monster knows there's still two more books to go. Three more so, books? Really? And and a gender-bent version, and a book from his perspective. This is a fucking... It's an empire. So now, now the object of affection lays broken in a hospital, thinking that... Uh, maybe, actually, it would have been better to just turn into a monster and not be broken in a hospital. Um, now, at this point, uh, the monster has no no problem resisting. Uh, he's, he's, he's absolutely sure he did the right thing this time. And he calls the nurse to administer morphine, seemingly against the object of affection's will. Yeah. I had a lot of problems with that. 
Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. I, I highlighted that too. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you can do that. I also I actually, <laughs> I actually highlighted it and said Nate is going to hate this. Yeah, I did. I hated it so much. But c- continue. Let's, let's get through this summary of all the books. Um, okay, the object of infection insists that she be allowed to become a monster so that she can be an equal, you know, with her beloved. Uh, but the monster reminds her that it's not always about what she wants, and it's usually about what he wants for her. Uh, and uh, point 18, I just wrote, Bella and Edward's relationship meets all 15 criteria set by the National Domestic Violence Hotline for being in an abusive relationship. That's my summary. Yeah, I... I just read that uh, it would take a moment for the nitrous to heat from gas to liquid, and we <laughs> both highlighted that. Yeah, it's not how states of matter don't... <laughs> don't, don't... <laughs> you don't heat from a gas to a liquid, right? Yeah, you don't go from a, from a, a high-energy state to a low-energy state by adding energy. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, that is... That's Twilight. Um... That's was that's it, actually was the pain- least problematic Twilight, uh, because later on you get into weird baby love and shit. So this is uh this is where we're at in life. This is the book I just spent the last month reading. What was your impression of Twilight before we got into this? It was a series for tweens and young teen girls, and I guess some boys, and I guess some fathers who are dragged to the movies. Um <laughs> Did you I, think I I was... knew that their relationship was fucked up, but I didn't know. Like I only had the surface level knowledge, and I knew that there was some weird shit in it that was very questionable. I think someone made the case that Jacob telling Bella that if she's turned into a vampire, he'll kill her is like uh, honor <laughs> killing. Is problematic. Yeah. <laughs> So there were I I knew some some surface level like uh gross stuff. Um, okay, but you know like that all romance novels are gonna have they're gonna be dramatic and the drama is gonna come from conflict and conflict in a relationship can be like healthy conflict is boring. So you're not gonna write a book about about that time we fought about who who should pay the car payment and came to a amicable resolution. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's not what we're here for. Yeah, we're going to come to that time where I say, you don't get to drive anymore. Get in the passenger seat. I'm a better driver than you. I'm going to take you where you need to go. I don't care if it's your car, Ben. We're, I'm, I'm su- driving. I'm Move surprised over. at what you're not bringing up. So, so you had no introduction to Twilight except through Midnight Sun. And what did, what did you think of the first couple chapters of midnight sun what was your impression uh, of this grand love story my impression was why did why do they go to high school why is he spending his time in high school he starts out saying that high school is so boring and i'm like you know you can just not go right you know you can get a ged right you know there's like a thousand ways that you can sidestep going to high school especially if you're an immortal who's lived like a hundred and what six years or whatever like you know that you don't have to do all this and then he talks about he goes on and on about how lame humans are and they're all so self-absorbed and they're all so shit and then he's like i i want to blend in i want to i want to be human so badly we'd all give up our our immortality to be human if we could I, I can't believe how much you're bouncing around, actually. Like, I'm surprised what you haven't mentioned. And and that is uh, 10 pages into the book, our, our romantic lead comes up with a detailed plan oh, yeah. to he... murder 20 children <laughs> and eat the love interest. Um, yeah, I actually wondered if that was part of the original, <laughs> original no. story. I was like, that's a little weird. I don't think I heard of Edward thinking about killing everyone in a classroom so that he could then kill Bella and drink her blood. (laughs) Oh, no. Okay. So the scene in question is, uh, if you're familiar with the original Twilight, it's the scene where Bella first walks into the biology class 
and Edward uh, smells her for the first time. So I, I want to do a little quick background on on vampires in this universe. They, they drink blood to live, but they they have no real weaknesses whatsoever. Okay, hold They're, on. I'm going to have to back up on that drink blood to live thing because it's implied that, yes, they have this urge to drink blood and they need to drink blood, but also they don't need to drink blood and they can just live forever regardless. Well, okay. I think the way it goes is a vampire who doesn't drink blood won't die, but they will become increasingly desperate for blood blood to the point where they're basically animalistic yeah why they don't need the blood except oh. to, except to get rid of the urge for blood okay <laughs> well it doesn't do anything for them though it does make them more powerful i think that that gets into some stuff from later books but does it I, though it does uh it, it, it expressly does like that's part of the reason in later books, newborn vampires are stronger because they have an entire human blood supply in them. That's dumb. Look, I, <laughs> this is not the part of the book I have a problem with. <laughs> like, I'll give you your vampires. What I have, a, like, lore wise, what I have a problem with is the total lack of weaknesses and the total overpowering. Like, vampires are described as being able to run hundreds of miles per hour indefinitely and they're also like superman capital s strong also their brains are super fast i disagree i don't i think disagree with that i'm gonna go look at my notes i highlighted a section where it explicitly said that i don't think it did i think it go, did go look at the notes get the notes we're gonna solve this now not for the first time in my life, I wish that I could make my brain slow down, force it to move at human speed. I don't know. They've increased the speed of his brain. I guess. And or gave him supernatural anxiety. That, that never comes back, though. Like, she never, like, Edward never thinks super fast because Bella is the one who's coming up with plans at the end. <laughs> A real Sun Tzu level plan, as you put it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read my notes. I'm the one who's defending this. <laughs> Don't undermine me with my own notes, sir. <laughs> the pattern was tight, but there were tiny holes. I memorized them. Well, yeah, but that's because like he's seeing it over and over again because Alice is projecting it. Yeah, but he memorized it super fast while going down the highway at like a hundred. Edward's really good at Dark Souls. Oh, okay. <laughs> Except Dark Souls wasn't around back then, so No, but he he will be. He is now. He's probably out there playing Dark Souls. I doubt it. He can't grow or change, Ben. <laughs> Anyway, the reason I wanted to emphasize how powerful they are is, is because so he you could can... kill an entire classroom yes. and then drink Bella's blood. Yeah. So the they're basically gods. And when Bella walks into the room, he smells her for the first time. In the movie, this is... The... <laughs> God, I don't even know why. They instructed Robert Pattinson to play it like he's disgusted. <laughs> When in actuality, he's, he's overwhelmed with how sweet and delicious it is. Yeah, like the direction should have been like, you're smelling a steak so good you want to steal it off the dude's grill. And you're trying to resist stealing it off the dude's grill. Like, they they play it in the in the movie in the first book like he's disgusted. That's not what's going on. He's actually envisioning, like, first he goes through a detailed plan for, like, how he would go from, like, table to table, super speedy, breaking necks, and then he'd, like, murder Bella, and and then he realizes, he's like, no, that wouldn't work. Now, it'd be She'd much probably... easier to lure her away. No, no, no. He goes, that would give her a fraction of a second to react. I gotta kill her first then kill them, then he's but like... But he was upset with that plan because then her blood might spoil. Yes. So then he's like, okay, I can I can hold it in check for like like an hour, and then I'll be like, hey, Bella, you want to go see the new Linkin Park CD? <laughs> um, 
reanimation it's like it's like a remix of all the original songs and she's gonna be like what she's gonna go out to his car and then he can kill her then he's like no that's not gonna work too many people's like it gets creepy how much he's thought about this he's like that's not gonna work too many people saw me walk out with her i'll have to wait until she goes home and then sneak into her house and murder her there (laughs) but then i might have to kill her dad well you know Uh, you know then there, uh, he's the sheriff, so no one can investigate his own murder. So, <laughs> 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 well, yeah. So that's uh, that is uh, Midnight Suns' introduction. That is the first chapter we have with Mister Edward. He's supposed to be likable, I guess. Didn't didn't really come off as that though. So this is actually the chapter that started it all. Oh this my is God. the. This is the idea that sparked Midnight Sun. She wanted to get a better she, idea of what things were like from Edward's perspective. She, she really wanted to make Edward into the worst kind of school shooter. I definitely got that vibe. Uh, <laughs> it was not good. Um, I guess the only way I can defend this is for a moment, for a moment, I thought the story was going in a slightly different direction tonally. I I wouldn't necessarily hate if Edward started out as a true monster, like, like a true horror movie monster who's just barely keeping his shit together. And then through interactions with Bella, he, he understands the value of humanity and grows to want to save it. But, the problem with that is vampires can't grow or change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Meyer throws in this line about vampires can't. They can it's only very... change once. When they find someone they truly love, they'll no. change and that's it. And, and no, then you she... never change ever again. She throws in this bit about how like emotional maturity wise you're stuck at the age you were turned she did not use those words she clarifies it further in future books well we can't use future books in this (laughs) well actually or else i'm gonna start bringing up the baby which there's no defense (laughs) for (laughs) yeah i can't that's bad um so one of the one of the vampire crimes that the Volturi will come and kill you for is if you create uh, a vampire child, like a vampire toddler, because the Volturi are all about not exposing vampires to the human world, like maintaining the secret. And basically, for some it, reason, yeah, they're not really clear on that. Uh, but basically, if you turn uh, like a toddler their tantrums could kill thousands and indeed have uh, that's occurred in the past. So what you're saying is the Volturi are right <laughs> about this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually the plot of breaking dawn is they think Edward and Bella's kid is a child turned into a vampire and they are coming to execute them for that crime. And then they're, they're like, mm, no, she's not. And they're like, okay, and then they leave, and everyone lived happily ever after. There's a little more to it than that. <laughs> I don't feel like there is. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of buildup. <laughs> there's a lot of buildup of they have to gather witnesses, and they have to find another vampire-human hybrid yeah. to prove that it's not it's not a problem. But yeah, that, that's, I was kind of hoping they'd go that direction with Edward where he's like a monster who doesn't understand humanity because in the, in the original Twilight, he's just kind of the super cool, super mysterious dude who's like unattainable. Yeah, he, he gets out of the rain, but it looks like his hair just stepped out of a shampoo commercial. It was a hair gel commercial. <laughs> what the fuck ever, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so the vampires are gods which kind of is one of the problems of the yeah original but he Twilight. complains about how it's a curse it it sucks to live forever have superpowers run really fast not have to worry about sustenance like god 
<laughs> sure, there are some starving people in the world who would disagree with you, Edward. Pretty sure they would take vampirism over uh, being cold and hungry every night. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> you think that, that should be Edward's mission? <laughs> No, I think I like your idea of uh, go colonize Mars. We'll give you a we'll give you a <laughs> spaceship full of blood. You just go f- fucking do it. <laughs> you don't need to breathe, so yeah. And you don't so feel basically, temperature. You you probably just fly to Mars yourself. What Stephanie Meyer is trying to do is, I think, establish it, in the first Twilight. Edward keeps talking about how dangerous it is for Bella to be around him. And you kind of never really get why, because he, he usually seems to be in more or less total control of himself. Oh, so he's not a crazy murder lunatic in the first one. Well, he is in his head, I guess. I I mean, from Bella's perspective, he seems like he's just totally in control and saying weird cryptic shit all the time. Yeah. Basically, it's flipped. So, in this one, Bella seems like she's kind of... <laughs> Bella actually seems like she's kind of half asleep. The <laughs> <entire> <laughs> <part>. <laughs> <But> <laughs> she's kind of unshakable. Like, nothing really seems to get to Bella. She's just kind of very, like, go with the flow, I guess. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> He's like, I'm a vampire, and she's like, I don't care. That's like her. That's like her whole life. Hey, Bella, we're moving to Florida because your stepdad got signed. Off we go. All right, whatever, mom. I want to have a special section on her fucking mom. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's flipped in this one. Is is that Edward's like neurotic and and Bella's super cool, but in from Bella's perspective, Edward's super cool, and she's just like constantly. So neither going away of them around. are their true selves, is what you're saying. The, yeah, kind of. We, well, the first book is written like first person from Bella's perspective, right? And this one, both of them are unreliable narrators. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Neither of them are being their true selves around each other. Romance of the century. This needs to last forever. <laughs> Well, teen romance of the century. That that that's going to be my constant defense to this. Is... <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing about teen romances. Uh they they don't last forever, Ben. You eventually grow up. Here's the thing about books for teens. <laughs> They're about teens. <laughs> that's really unfortunate. <laughs> the book is super nostalgic for me because I don't know, she just does like for better or worse. She just does such a good job of putting you in the headspace of a 17-year-old. I don't know like, why you have nostalgia for that. <laughs> uh, well, I dated when I was 17. Okay. So, like, I remember what it was like. Like, they're very. It, it's a very powerful dopamine hit when you're 17 and you date for the first time. Or, yeah, you know, like, you get your first kiss or something. Like, your your first kiss is, like a drugs rush of dopamine. Right. And that's something you're not really going to get too many more times. You eventually run out of firsts and then you, you settle into a more, more permanent, more stable relationship. But I think most people kind of miss that. Yeah. But do most people remember who their first kiss was with and then remember that person fondly? (laughs) I know I do. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, that's on you, buddy. I don't think I'm that bad. Yeah, I think I'm okay with it. I I don't know how most people feel about that, actually. I don't know. I I don't think I was burned nearly as horribly as you were. Tweet at Ben. (laughs) Tweet tweet at WAB Pod. Tweet at Ben. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just some random guy, Ben. Go ahead. Tweet at WAB Pod. (laughs) Tell me tell me if you remember your first kiss fondly or with regret. Not the first kiss. The person that you oh, had the okay. first kiss with. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if most people are going to hate their like teenage crush. Especially, like, I guess I haven't gone back to my hometown in a while. I feel like most people when they're 16 are, are idiots. And so... That's fair. Yeah. Like, you're basically, like, 
it's part of the reason I'm not big on high school reunions is because you're like, basically after 10 years, you're meeting an entirely different person. <laughs> like we I have nothing in common with this person anymore. Well, my high school reunion was a black tie event at an art gallery originally. Oh my God. And I went, that's fucking dumb. And not enough people signed up and paid. So they moved the event to like a normal restaurant instead. Yeah. Uh, they always put the weirdest people in charge of planning that shit. Yeah, I realized that my friend was our class president. I didn't know that. But he was <laughs> like, yeah, hey guys, uh, I live in California and I'm not gonna ma- I'm not gonna do this. So you guys can plan it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I forget who who planned mine. We're we're way off the topic of Twilight now, but like <laughs> That's fine. Th- bonus they, bonus footage, Ben. They found like my mom's house. Because nobody knew where I lived. I didn't stay in contact with a lot of people. And the people I did stay in contact with weren't gonna go. <laughs> They uh they kept contacting my mom like repeatedly to try to find me to invite me to this thing, and I was like, just if you fail to get a hold of me three times, take the maybe hint. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> like if you leave three messages, <laughs> I'm and I don't reply. I guess I'm maybe I, I shouldn't be talking about positive human interactions with my avoidance behavior. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is Ben from the future. I know that we've just barely scratched the surface of the actual text of Midnight Sun, but we are also, unfortunately, just about out of time. I'd like to invite you to please come back next week when we will discuss more about the Cullens and Edward's painfully slow realization that he may actually love Bella more than he wants to kill her. On a more serious note, if you are enjoying the podcast, I'd like to ask that you help us grow by sharing it with your own neglected high school acquaintances on social media. We are trying to grow the podcast so that we can take on some new and interesting projects, and right now, sharing it on social media is probably the best way you can help us do that. As always, don't forget to check out our blog at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja. Please follow us on Twitter at WABpod. Thank you so much, everyone, for checking out the podcast. And hopefully we will see you next week for more spicy vampire romance. Goodbye, everyone. Next time on Words About Books. But uh, I'd watch so it. I think I think the impression I got in in the first book is that they don't appear to be couples to the people around them. Uh-huh. But, but like was... Rosalie and Emmett. I want to s- yeah, but I want to say I guess I think I remember in the movie they explicitly said that Rosalie was with Emmett. I don't know what the deal is with that. I, I, I... they're they're just step siblings who realize like text me hey, at you're... WAB Pod or, or tweet me at WAB Pod if you know what the deal with that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't. I didn't think about it. I don't. I guess it's she's she's just like a stage magician. She just you misdirects the incest <laughs> <laughs> as stage magicians. Do. <laughs> oh, I, I think I might have blown the speakers with that one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>